Hey everyone, it's Nature News Time. I'm Alice and I'm here with all the biggest updates in wildlife, science, climate, and environmental policy. And if you love nature, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on those bell notifications, give this video a like, and leave your comments and questions down below using the hashtag Nature News. How many of you take medication on a daily or even a weekly basis? Well, for those of us that live in developed nations, this is something we take for granted. So when was the last time you thought about where your medication even came from? More than a third of modern drugs are actually derived from natural products, and more than 60 to 80% of antibiotics and anti-cancer drugs actually originate from the natural world. More than 60,000 plants and fungus around the world actually have medicinal properties. And over the last four years, the number of plants and fungus risking extinction has doubled to 40%. And if we lose our biodiversity and lose our habitat for plants and animals, we're also threatening the survival of our species. So we really need to do a better job at protecting the biodiversity around us. Have you ever seen an owl out in the woods? Well, they're incredible looking birds of prey. And this species of spotted owl actually lives in the Canadian forest. There's only one breeding pair left, but their home in British Columbia is slated for imminent logging. Now they live in an old growth forest with Douglas fir, Western hemlock and Western, Western red cedar. And Eco Justice has actually asked for an emergency stay from the government on logging this area. And let's hope it works because unlike six other provinces in Canada, BC doesn't have a standalone legislation to protect spotted owls or any other endangered species. Now, 25 of these owls actually live in captivity within a breeding program, but there's actually no timeline of when any of these birds are going to be set back into the wild. Sharks, you either fear them or love them. But one thing is certain, and that is they are an important species in our oceans because they're the top predator. And what happens to them affects all of the other species in the sea. Now, many of the world's shark species have declined by 90%, including this species, which is called the small tail shark, which went from being highly abundant to nearly extinct in just over 40 years. Now, it was once one of the most common fish species caught off northern Brazil, but today you can rarely find it. And the problem comes from overfishing and the use of gillnet fishing. Now, small scale artisanal fishers use gillnets to catch species like mackerel and other fish, while industrial fishing operations use trawl nets to catch shrimp and massive gillnets to scoop up catfish and other bottom dwelling species. And get this, these gillnets can regularly reach up to five and a half miles in length. Yeah, can you imagine the amount of fish and other species are in those? And the Brazilian waters have little to no regulations for this type of practice. Each one of these methods indiscriminately catches a wide range of species, including small tail sharks, which happen to swim in muddy coastal waters and estuaries. The sharks usually only reach about three to four feet in length, so they're easily swapped up by these fishing operations. And on top of that, it's common, commonly juvenile sharks that are caught, which actually leads to populations never reaching maturity, which is a huge problem. Now, speaking of fish, a few weeks ago, we talked about the threat of Chinese fishing vessels in the Galapagos, which is one of the most biodiverse marine protected areas in the world, made famous by Charles Darwin, who documented these rich islands in the 1800s. People have been fighting to protect them ever since, but the threat from illegal Chinese vessels that earlier this summer actually waited right outside the marine protected zone to catch sharks illegally and other fish that would normally be protected, this is a real threat. And another threat is the lack of tourists because without tourist boats in the park, there are actually few boats out patrolling whom once acted really as a barrier between poachers and also pollution. Now, park officials are very worried right now because they're seeing an uptick in plastic debris, litter, and garbage in the oceans. But on the flip side, dolphins, penguins, sea turtles, and even migrating hammerheads have been seen even closer to shore without the onslaught of boats. So the hope here is that the Galapagos, as well as many other destinations, can actually take this time to come up with new and more sustainable models for the future of wildlife tourism. 
Now, if you've been wanting to travel and also want to protect the environment, then you should check out Travganic.com. Travganic.com is a global hub for wildlife tours, mountain trekking, and sustainable hotels. Overconsumption. Now, that's something most of us are very aware of. We're told by society to buy more and more and more. And this in part has led to our global waste problem. Instead of fixing things, we buy new ones and discard the old. But someone somewhere has to dispose of your waste or it ends up in a landfill or on the side of the road or in the ocean where it takes thousands of years to biodegrade. Now, some businesses are finally starting to look at the circular life cycle of their products, which basically means from beginning to end. And they're trying to see how they can help. IKEA just announced it would be begin a buying back used furniture from customers at about 30 cents on the dollar or more, which is going to start on Black Friday this year. Now, other companies like Patagonia and REI, who sell outdoor equipment, also do this. They have programs for buying back some of their clothing and other gear. Have you heard of bioluminescence? Well, it's an algae that glows like a greenish blue light bulb. And some sea creatures like squid, jellyfish, and others harness this ability too. And now a French company called Glowy is modeling their business off this natural phenomenon. Now they've taken the bioluminescent gene from Hawaiian bobtail squid and mixed it with E. coli bacteria to actually create living lights without the use of electricity. This is so cool. Now development of this is still in the research phase, but they have actually lit up some buildings throughout Europe with this algae. It only lasts about a week now, but they're trying to figure out how to make it a little bit longer. So I'll keep you updated on that. And that's all I have for you guys this week. Join me Sunday for a live chat on nature news, on our oceans, on biodiversity at 11 a.m. Pacific time. And make sure you're subscribed for more videos on hikes, wildlife, nature, and travel. Check out one of these other videos on my channel too, and I will see you next time.